Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sosa here, brings a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial I created your own, a cool little explosion wall, kind of like a party trick kind of effect kind of thing. So uh, if you guys were wondering, by the way, I do have morning voice because I didn't record my intro yesterday, but it's all right. Um, So yeah, if you guys are wondering, this entire month for me was just a sort of videos to kind of pull out that I had on my sticky notes I just really wanted to do and just see how they do as their own main videos on the channel itself. But of course, I'm going to be going back into it. I think the whole month thing is over for me. I believe we can go back into the, you know, more normal videos, but I do want to just give like a test pilot of these kind of videos and hopefully you guys did enjoy like the fonts like the cool particle effect kind of things little text effects and something like this was kind of like a little party trick i think it's just pretty fun and it's a little fun little thing to do so hopefully if you guys enjoy these kind of tutorials which i can see that you guys would do but we also do lack on the likes a little bit because it's a little more different than what i usually do but it's whatever, right? I just post these videos in more in the middle of the week, but I wanted to give a little test trial on how they do mainly. But regardless, I wanted to say uh, thank you guys very much for all the subscribing and stuff like that. Like one of our best months so far. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and just let you guys go because all we really be doing today is like figuring out like shadow, pen tool, and just kind of like make a cool little background little effect kind of thing. So I don't know how personally you would use it, but I just think it's like it's I just think it's cool. So that's why I felt like doing it honestly. But I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Hope you guys do enjoy the video here today and enjoy the non morning voice sesso. Until then, I gotta you know get this video rendering, dude. All right, so I'll see you guys later. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this thing going. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to use this as an example as well. That way I can get as close as possible to the original concept as well as also not going too far away from what you guys wanted to probably see in the beginning, which happened to be something like I'm showing off in the beginning as well. But hopefully the thumbnail is also really cool and clickbaity enough that way you can kind of like be like, yo, like how'd you do it? And you're like, holy crap, it's that simple. But this thing is a little bit tedious. However, I believe building it in the way that you're going to be building it is going to be really cool and kind of like, you know, maybe work on your pencil skills, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing going. So I'm going to be referring back to this over and over again for you guys to like at least notice it. Also, I have it to my right as well. So I can also look back over here. But just so I can show you guys as well, I'm going to, of course, keep this little thing up right now. And I believe this happens to be this right here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide this. And we're going to start off by simply just making a new layer here. Also have all the color palettes here. Maybe I'll just run through them really quickly so you guys can just, of course, you know, get the hex codes. 1D, 1D, multiple. Then we have 2, 3, 2, 3, multiple. And then we have 21 multiple. And then we have 20 multiple. And then the last one is a 26 multiple, which is very simple, just kind of like on a grayscale area. And usually even like the littlest bit, like it's from 20 to 21, obviously it's a different color, but it, even when it comes to everything is one sort of unified color itself, it looks very, very easy to kind of sort of see the different costumes themselves, right? So, uh, excuse me, different colors themselves very easily, way more easier than it is when you have like a very bright yellow or something like that with maybe like a, a dark, another yellow, but it's kind of hard to probably see it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start off with a new layer. I'm going to call this the starting square. Can I spell square right? That is not square. Oh, I'm... <laughs> We got it. Okay. So on this starting square right here, I'm going to go ahead and go to the marquee tool, just like so. And this is the rectangle marquee tool. We're probably going to be using this a lot if you guys wish to. Um, otherwise, besides this, we're going to be using just the pen tool only. And that's kind of like basically it, right? So on the rectangle marquee tool, which is basically using M on your keyboard, you can, by the way, make perfect squares by holding shift. So you can see that kind of makes a perfect square very, very easily, just like so. My ruler is a little bit off but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to cut it in any in a second anyway. But if you guys want to make perfect squares, holding shift will do that, allow that for you guys. So just like so, you guys can see. Also, if you were to click in the middle somewhere and then hold shift, but then hold alt as well, it'll give you guys the point of interest of where it started off at. So I don't know, just little 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 tips here and there for you guys. So I'm going to make a nice little square for myself. And I'm gonna, on this little starting square uh, layer here, I'm going to right click, fill the path, then drop down to use color. And we're going to start off with, I believe, this color right here. Where's this one? No, I think it's this color right here. So, just like so, deselect. And you can kind of see it, right? Okay. So, I know it's going to be hard for you to see in the background at first. However, what I'm going to do for you guys is also put on this color balance. That way, it's a blue here. That way, I can totally see what's going on here. Because I know for a second, I was just like, how am I going to show you guys? And I was like, oh, wait, I made a color balance. No worries. So, on the starting square here, I'm going to start off by cutting this out very simply, right? So, make another self, like a big, make yourself, that was English, right? Make yourself another little square here. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to cut off this point over here. Nice little top left. And then just take off maybe a little bit on the bottom right, just like so. That's kind of like the same as I think that I did on my example image. And I believe that is pretty good. So, 
I'm going to be asking yourselves, I'm going to be using a reference that I already kind of made already, right? Where I kind of like made up and sort of just figured out how it's going to work out in the end. However, I know for sure that when you guys do different shapes, maybe it's you do like, I don't know, triangles and like next time, or just have like, you know, if like something like this next time, like, you know, breaking out of a thumbnail or something like that. You know what I mean? So I know that it's going to be hard for you to kind of figure out where you're going to put your sort of your little details and such, right? So if I just show you guys in a second while I build it, I'll show you guys exactly what I mean by that. So I'm gonna start off with doing the sort of the left part to make myself like a little left wall and use this starting square for most of my little quadrants. I'm gonna say, I wanna say three quadrants to use them as a back sort of wall. Now I'm not a 3D expert or anything like that. Uh, I just like, if it looks good in this case, I think it's okay. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make a new layer here. And I'm going to simply just start off by using that, like I said, that left wall. I'm going to show you guys what I mean in a second. So I'm going to group this together so you guys know. And I can always just hide this so I can show you guys things really quickly. This right here, right, this little left wall is what I'm going to be doing first. So I'm going to go ahead, like I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit. I think I starts right here. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of hold shift, by the way. If you hold shift, you can make straight lines very easily. You don't have to guess. You don't have to be like... Uh, you know, is this a straight line? Definitely not, because by the way, a little tip of interest, you can see that my, like, th uh, I almost said my thumbnail, my my pen tool mark right here, you can see it looks a little bit zagged. So if you kind of really want to figure out if it's the middle by not holding shift for whatever reason you want to do that for, if you kind of just wait until that also connects in a straight line, and I believe that is, yeah, that's a straight line now. So you can see that a little tip if you guys don't know, if you guys know already, right? But holding shift totally, does make straight lines, right? So you see how that works very easily. You can make some perfect squares by doing the whole straight line thing as well. But if you hold shift while also clicking on an angle, it'll give you a perfect, I believe it's 45 degree angle every single time. So you can see this right here, no matter what you do, no matter where you click, as long as you click on an angle, it will give you guys a 45 degree angle very simply, right? So that's gonna be doing for this right here. Take this deadly gap, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the shift and click on an angle just like so. That way I give myself a nice little 45 degree angle. I'm gonna bring this up and connect it. Now, if you wanna ever connect and move things after I connected them, I'm gonna say, hey, maybe I wanna move this down, which I believe I want. I wanna definitely do, right? So if you want, you can keep it here. I do have it somewhat close to this little point right here of interest. However, I'm just gonna keep it a little bit further down. So if you guys want to, if you wanna learn how to open the path, all you have to do is hold control, select on a point, just like so. And if you hold control, right, once you select that little point here, you can hold shift as well and select multiple points. And then what you can do afterwards, right? See how these are unhighlighted. These are too highlighted. You can just hold control then again, hold shift by the way to make sure it's on a straight line, just like so, right? If I don't hold shift, you can move it anywhere. If I hold shift, you can see it only moves in, you know, very straight lines basically, right? Just like so. And I'll move it just a little bit further down and say, okay, that is what I want to have it for. And then I'm going to simply on a new layer right above the starting square, I'm going to do my first little wall drop down fill the color I'm gonna use that nice black here and hide the path so what you can do is pretty much for everything that happens to go around the actual shape itself the original background shape what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold control and select the thumbnail of the starting square just like so and then you're gonna basically do is when you go to the rectangle marking tool again the reason for this is when you have the rectangle marking tool selected which is also R on your or excuse me M on your keyboard you can just right click select the inverse and then select back on that layer that you just maybe used or something like that and then press delete on your keyboard and it'll completely just delete everything that's around the actual shape which is perfectly what you want to have so that's going to work for me so <coughs> excuse me i'm going to go ahead and make yet again another new layer let's see here click around here hold shift to make that perfect line and it also works out that you don't have to ever guess like you know you know is this the middle or is this exactly on the line when you hold shift it'll do it for you guys so that's kind of like a little thing right there I'll say that's about that right there almost. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of bring this over here. So I gotta show you guys the whole starting quadrant thing really quick. So if I press Control H, right, it'll bring my rulers. I already, had, I already made a ruler that kind of you know boxes my square in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and kind of say, I want three little different spots here. So I'm gonna work with this spot here. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a backdrop a side wall and then a flooring. So I'm gonna say if I have that idea, if you're gonna use a square for your kind of reference image or your reference shape, I would say using the three little quadrants or however many you kind of need to do this would work out your best, just like so. So I'm gonna to say to myself, okay, now I'm gonna stop around here for my little quadrant, I'm gonna call it, bring it over here and make sure I kind of stop it on the line by the way if you ever press Control h to unhide your rulers it's going to hide your path as well so that's probably the reason why you ever figure that out 
and I'm gonna hold shift again so that way I have a perfect angle just like so so no matter what you think this angle and this angle here are both the same when it comes to you know what you know degree it is on the angle I just want to quickly show you guys to prove it if I just move it over undo that one please un. there you go move that over you can see it's on the perfect same exact line so what I can do now is then connect these right here and I believe I use a color around a little bit more lighter than the background color so I'm gonna, I believe it's gonna be excuse me a little more darker than the background color I believe it would be this one then just like so right and now we have our little floor plane right here which I'm gonna of course do again control click on the starting square plus on my keyboard right click select the inverse click on this layer again and then delete it rinse and repeat process very easy now that's my little flooring i'm gonna call that right so i'm gonna do one more time is make a new layer by the way i think this probably works super super well in illustrator but i'm doing it in photoshop because i did it in photoshop originally i just thought about it just now i'm like holy crap this would be 10 times easier to do in illustrator but you know whatever it's all good so there's a line right there, a 45 degree angle, and if I hold shift to make a straight line down here, because of course if I bring up the rulers again, that is that axis right there, excuse me, maybe I need to move it over to right there, now I know, right, so it's perfectly in that little first quadrant, and I connect it, I'm going to go ahead and already on a new layer, right click, fill path, and we're going to use the same black as we did for the side wall to kind of indicate that that is another wall going down, so if I just undo that, and then square, select the inverse and then delete it. It's way easier to do that rather than sort of building, you know, perfect lines and just going around the exact same thing and might have a fun of yourself like, you know, missing a corner or whatnot. But I would just say use the actual little delete to a little tip right there. Um, so yeah, that's our first little kind of spot here. Now, the second spot I'm gonna do is the middle spot right here. We'll call it quadrant two for whatever reason. And we're just gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna start off with this box right here, this little side wall right here. Right, so if you guys can see again as well, you can see it. This is like the first little box. Let's just go ahead and use like a nice little, you know, a little demonstration right here with a little white. Right, this is our first box right here. And you can see there's a back wall, side wall, and then the flooring. And then again, for the second little, you know, box right here, we'll call it. We'll say that this is a third one right here. I would say, or excuse me, like this right here would be the third one, just so you guys know. Right, and I would say this is the back wall. You can even say this is another back wall here, but that's a very simple thing that I did. I kind of used that, or I did that afterwards. Right, and this is our side wall right here. This is our flooring, and also this is our flooring, right? But if you kind of think of it that that way, hopefully that'll help just a little bit. I am not an expert at this, like I said, when it comes to 3D building rooms and whatnot. I sucked at this in like you know college, you know, using a ruler and kind of like figuring out how to make that 3D box in a different way. I don't know if you guys ever did that, but whatever. Anyway, right? Just so you guys know, hopefully that can help you guys out. So I'm gonna do this side wall right here. So open this back up, boom, right? On my new layer, which I believe it's on. No, it's not new layer. We're gonna go ahead and start off on this little point right here. Come down. It's on it. Come down. I'll say around, maybe around here. Hopefully a little further than half. I believe it's what it, what it was, right? Yeah, a little further than halfway on the side wall right over here. If I hold Shift, make our nice little 45 degree angle. And I think that's pretty thick. So I'm gonna say that a little more thinner. And there we go, right? Connect it. And I believe the call I'm going to be using for this little side wall happens to be this one, I believe, right? It's basically a little less darker than this one over here. You probably can't tell. If you guys can't tell, I don't know. But this, this, there's definitely two different tones here. Some people really can't tell the difference of colors. But I don't know. Looking at them for so long, you might actually find yourself figuring it out. Anyway, of course, you have a little trick with the whole starting square. And there we go for this little uh, first little side wall in the middle quadrant, right? And then we're going to make a new layer, just like so click here hold shift for the perfect angle and we'll go ahead and just go maybe around halfway from here to here in this quadrant right here hold shift again and then connect this now for something like this I'm just gonna follow this line right here and then make sure I wait until this becomes a straight line that way I kind of know that it's perfect and okay there we go now it's perfect so I don't know if you guys saw the little in case that I was looking at but and that way I know that this is also the perfect 45 degree angle and also this is a perfect straight line. Um, so once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and on that new layer make a fill pattern and we're going to make it, I believe, I believe it's the color of the, this color right here, but a little less darker. So I'm going to go with this right here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it needs to be a little bit less darker. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to press Control U on the actual layer itself. So on this layer here, press Control U to bring up the hue and saturation table. I'm going to take my lightness and literally just put it up one. And that'd be perfect, right? So you can see it makes a huge difference rather from this to this, right? 
So we're gonna make another yet again a new layer here. And we're gonna click on this corner here, hold shift, make it down here. Okay, there we go. And then straight line. And then connect that and we'll make sure this is a straight line. Now it is, and then right click, fill. And we're gonna make this, I believe we should just basically make it black, right? Or the sidewalls here, or the sidewall on this one. And delete the path, click on the whole control, click on the starting square, press M on your keyboard, select inverse, and then delete again for the outside to be deleted. And now we kind of have something like this going on. It looks pretty dang cool. Now, I believe lastly, I say we do this little, okay, so I did another sidewall like right around here. We'll do that again. We'll just make it so that mm, everything's on a 45 degree angle. I'll, I'll probably keep it consistent, but for the sake of just doing it the way I kind of did it in the other one, I'll just say around here is gonna be just another separate wall. And then we'll just make this right here another flooring. So I'm gonna show you guys what I mean, right? This is on a 45 degree angle. I wanna see what it would look like though, if it was. Eh, that wouldn't look that bad at all, actually. So let's just do it on a 45 degree angle so we can keep it consistent, right? So what I'm gonna do is on this new layer, right click, fill the path in. I believe this color would be something around, it's actually the same color as like this one right here, right? Just like so, and then of course select the square, select the inverse, press delete your keyboard, and there we go for that. And then what I'm gonna do really quickly now is I'm gonna go ahead and on a new layer again, make our flooring for this bottom half right here. So click over here. And I believe if I just kind of keep below everything, so if I just kind of put it below these two things really quick, make a new layer, and then I believe I should use a color that kind of resembles this color up here. Right, select this inverse, and then delete it. We'll give ourselves like a little flooring now, right? That looks pretty good. Yeah, that does work. Okay, cool. So we kind of have like another sidewall right here. You know the sidewall's a little bit too thick. If I would, I'd probably keep it around here, a little less thick. Right, but this is of course trial and error kind of things, right? So this looks more like a wall if you kind of bring it over here. And if I go back to this little layer over here, kind of connect it, go around, fill it in with the same color, of course, as the floors over here, in whatever quadrant you're working in. And then let's see what that looks like. Is that look a little better? I think that looks a little bit better. Yeah, so, okay, so you can see what I mean now, right? So it kind of looks more like a side wall, like this one over here. It was just a little bit too thick, which gave it like a really weird, uh, like feeling because all the sidewalls that I have look kind of like you know more skinnier, right? So I'm gonna do one last thing I believe and it would be the little square in the middle, right? So I'm gonna look at the square right here in the middle just like so and I'm gonna do for that is very very easy actually So on a new layer, I'm gonna put my square Should I put it exactly right here or should I put it like a little more higher? I feel like if I put it a little more higher, let's just see what happens I can always just move it honestly, right? So I'm gonna make a nice simple size square whatever, whatever size I want to have it, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just fill it in with the color that kind of matches this flooring right here or like this flooring right here, why not? And then all the backspace and quick fill that in. So what I'm gonna do very simply, right, is just make a duplicate of this one little square that we just made, right? So control J on your keyboard, control T to bring up the free transform. And then if you just take a corner and you hold shift and alt, you can simply just keep it in the same exact sort of orientation just like so. Press enter. So you can't see the two squares because there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, they have the same color. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly bring up the layer styles here. I'll zoom out a little bit so I can see my bottom little hex thing. And I click on color overlay. And we're gonna simply just click on a darker color just like so I guess. Press okay, press okay again. And now what I can do is I can just make two very, very simple things over here. So if I just click over here, right? Let's see if it's actually a true 45 degree angle. If I click on this corner and hold shift and click over here, it should be, yep. So I, that's confirmed 45 degree angle, just so you guys know. Um, if you guys don't know geometry. Click over here again, just like so. Now hopefully get on perfect as possible because I'm just gonna duplicate this shape really quick. So right now, no, all I have to do is on make, mm, English is a hard language. If you guys just wanna look at my blue sort of pencils, I wanna you know show you guys what I'm doing as well, right? So I just simply made a simple copy of the square, made a little more shorter, which is gonna give me a nice cool kind of feeling that there is a back wall behind this wall we just made with this gray box right here, right? This I'm gonna use this gray box as a top and bottom sort of like you know, ceiling and floor, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make these little side panels a little bit more darker, so that way we, of course, we had to play the theme around that this, these little side walls that are darker are all sort of side walls, right? That we made them darker colors. So if I were to make a new layer just like so, 
and use this darker color here. I believe that it should work. No, it's the same color as this. So I'm going to just simply press control U, move it one down or five down. Five down is pretty good. Press OK. And I'm just going to duplicate it around just by simply holding Alt and Shift. What Alt does is makes a duplicate automatically, right? As you can see over here, makes a duplicate automatically. If I'm holding Shift, it'll keep it on the same axis when I actually go ahead and drag it over. That way I'm pressing Control T and then flip it horizontally, press Enter, and there we go. We have a little box down there. Now, if I want to move my box, I'll have to do is just select all the different things and then put it around here. Now, in the beginning, I also did it so that this little color here is a little bit different. So if I just uncheck this now, you can see if I zoom out, it kind of looks like, of course, I'm gonna move this as well. It kind of looks like there's a hole inside the, the this wall that we have, this little gray wall that we have. So that's pretty much it. That is the tutorial for today. Now, I believe I did some weird, I did some really cool, but slightly weird things when I did this myself. What I, I just wanna show you guys really quick why, why I did it. I don't know. I was thinking like for like cool little albums and whatnot, since albums usually have like one color when it comes to, or one at least like color scheme and also is in that perfect little square. I was thinking about this, right? I had like these little, uh, let's use a size two brush, 100 hardness. That way when I do this, right? Now I might have the example shown in the beginning. Hopefully I did that because otherwise this would be like really awkward if I don't use this, but I'm also like going to, but I'm just gonna follow some of these lines here right just like so little lines like so right if i just make a stroke path on that brush setting that i just used which is two size and 100 hardness press ok it will select the color of the orange or excuse me the orange the uh, grid that i just chose but i'm going to make it white by just pressing Control u bringing my lightness up just like so and i can just do like a little overlay like so right and then i can go ahead and bring in maybe like a gradient map maybe um and do some really cool like funky looking like, look, does that not look just cool? I don't know what it is about things that just like don't work, but they work. You know what I mean? Like, I just think this looks cool. So, I don't know. If you guys want to do something like this, you guys can definitely as well. Uh, maybe if I even change this color, maybe. What if I just made like a, like an orange or a pink, something like that, right? So, it's like a little fun little project you can definitely do when it comes to just doing something really cool, really original, really different. So, hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video here today. I know if I probably, hopefully I said in the beginning as well, but these videos for me are just really fun videos that I just personally choose to just want to do. I promise I'll bring back those, you know, brand tutorials and stuff like that, but I just wanted to do some stuff for like a couple weeks of just me really doing stuff that I just feel like it's just cool, honestly. I, I've been missing out, out on my channel personally, but hope you guys do understand and hopefully you guys still enjoy it and stuff like that. I, I know you guys do, but we are lacking the likes a little bit. Let's just go ahead and just push for that 200 really quick for the secret download. Of course, I'll just put maybe a little more cool little like little indentions like this. So I don't know what to call it, like 3D explosion, whatever. Maybe you guys can give me some, hand, uh, you know, a little handle on it and probably just let me know what you guys think of a title. Um, maybe if we want to make this effect a little more, I guess, uh, cooler name for it, right? So hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video here today. I'm going to go ahead and just go watch a Black Panther in about two and a half hours unfortunately anyway <laughs> hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today hope you guys enjoy your weekend hope you guys enjoy your next week until my next video and i'll see you guys you know next time peace out so switch you out later do not forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys peace <laughs>